یا حیدر یا حیدر یا حیدر 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 یا حیدر یا حیدر السلام علیکم یا علی ابن موسی الإمام التقي النبي وحجتك على من فوق الأرض ومن تحت الثرى الصديق الشهي صلاة كثيرة تامة زاكية متواصلة متواترة مترا كأفضل ما صليت على أحد من أوليائك Imam Ali ibn al-Rada alayhi salam was one of the children of Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam and he was born in Medina. Imam al-Rada alayhi salam lived with his father for a few years until his father was captured by al-Harun al-Abbasi and was imprisoned after which Imam al-Rada alayhi salam assumed the responsibility of taking care of the family of Bani Hashim or the Fatimiyat or the children of Imam Ali alayhi salam after his father or during the time of his father being in the prison. So this was the time and then when his father was martyred in the prison of Harun al-Rashid, Imam al-Rada assumed the responsibilities of Imama. There was initially an objection to his Imama by a group of individuals known as Al-Waqafiyya that were led by a man called Ali ibn Abi Hamza al-Bata'ini and Ziyad ibn Marwan al-Qandi and Uthman al-Rawasi. All three who were actually genuine companions of Imam al-Kadhim but turned against him because of some money, financial wealth that they had with them. But they were proven wrong by the Imam alayhi, and unlike the Khilafah of Imam al-Kadhim Imam al-Ghidha actually went explicit with his Khilafah, with his basically, not Khilafah in the sense um, al-Khilafah al-Zahiriya, uh, the leadership, but rather there are so many interpretations why he is called Al-Rada, but uh, some people said that Al-Mu'moon used to call him that, and we have, we deny that, and we have the best one who answered that issue or that rumor is Al-Allama uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Ali Yassin in his book about the biography of the 12 Imams. But he was well known of his title and uh, some people say that he was well known of that title because he was accepted by the Am and Al-Khas, uh, i.e. the uh, 
the Sunni and the Shia, all of the Muslims, and so on and so forth. There are so many theories, but uh, the fact that he is called al Rada and people before al Rada was waited for him, and people after him uh, start, you know, the Imams start preparing for a new phase. So the life of Imam al Rada, the Imam of Imam al Rada, was kind of. Uh, a, a divider or, or, or kind of ending a, a, a stage and beginning of a new stage in the history of Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim. There is a ziyara called uh, Ziyaratul Jawadain in which we uh, send our peace and salutations to uh, Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam as well as uh, his son Imam Muhammad ibn Ali and al-Jawad. And in that ziyara, there is a reference uh, being made to the eighth Imam as such. As-salamu ala al-imam al-ra'oof, which means peace be upon the compassionate, loving Imam. There's been a lot of discussion uh, centered around the compassion of Imam al-Ridha. And uh, in, in particular, why Imam al-Ridha has been singled out from all of the other Imams as the one who is compassionate, as the one who is loving as the one who is merciful, right? And the word ra'uf is, an, is a step up from rahim. Rahim is to be merciful, right? But ra'uf is something even greater than merciful. It is the kind of mercy that the recipient of that mercy is able to easily detect and is able to taste. As a child is able to taste the mercy of his mother, not so much his father, perhaps, because the father works in the background, the father is working as the breadwinner, and he's providing for the family. But when it comes to the mother, there's a, a relationship that's on a completely different level. And that's ra'fa, that's not rahma, that's mercy that is beyond the type of typical mercy that you get from a father towards his son, even. So Imam al Rada is labeled as Al Imam al Ra'uf. Life was at the time of Al Ma'mun. Uh, I mean, most of his Imam, because everyone remember that or knows that the Imam was asked by Al Ma'mun to become the crown prince and asked for him to go and live in Tus. And uh, mentioning the time, uh, it was a critical time as the Muslimin or the Muslims start being more intellectual the translation became so active, translation of other books from other languages, from Greek to Arabic, from Persian, from so. Abdullah ibn al-Abbas. So Abdullah ibn al-Abbas, if we make it simple, he had a grandson. This grandson had a grandson. So the grandson of the grandson of Abdullah ibn al-Abbas is the founder of the Abbasi dynasty. And when the Abbasis came to power, now, initially, they rose to power, claiming that we will give the leadership to Bani Hashim. And they actually pledged their allegiance to the great grandchild of Al Imam Al Hassan. Salam. And they pledged their allegiance to him three times in Medina once, in Mecca once, and in a city close to Mecca called Al Abwa. Al Abwa, that's where three times they pledged their allegiance to this grandchild of Imam Al Hassan. Salam. But then they, once they took the Khilafah, they turned against them and they started persecuting Bani Hashim brutally, which led to the dispersion of Bani Hashim throughout the Muslim world. Among the caliphs of Bani Umayyah and Bani al-Abbas, one can safely say al-Ma'mun al-Abbasi was the smartest, 
and he was the most unique amongst them in the sense he really thought about each and every move he made plus he came out to the public being very intelligent he promoted literature he promoted science education which was quite different from let's say his brother al-amin who was known to be a womanizer a person who enjoyed parties and many of the caliphs in fact that came al-mutawakkil al-abbasi for example had that kind of reputation however al-ma'mun was different he did not have such a reputation in front of the people so he came to power now it's interesting to say that al-ma'mun is about six months older than his brother muhammad al-amin but his mother was a maid whereas muhammad al-amin his brother his mother was zubayda from bani hashim so muhammad al-amin in fact is the only abbasi caliph whose both parents come from bani hashim both are abbasi from both ends that's why he had really a prestige and his mother Zubaydah pushed and forced her husband Harun to have Muhammad al-Amin become his successor. 